street and I, I heard this voice saying, good evening, Mr. Dog. I, I turned around and here was this big six foot rabbit leaning up against a lamppost. Born Mary Agnes McDonnell Coyle, a pioneer in the early woman's part movement as a journalist, playwright, and children's novelist. She was born right here in Denver, Colorado. And what was known as the Baker's Neighborhood. And this is where she went to high school. And this is called West High School. And what a beautiful high school it is. I've driven by it and near it, but I've never actually stopped here to take a look at it. She grew up Irish Catholic and poor in the working class Baker neighborhood in Denver on the other side of the railroad tracks. And we are in the heart of Denver, so beware of the noise. Timothy, James, John, and Peter and her brother Charlie, who became the circus clown, who impacted her sense of comedy imitating his natural gifts at mimicry, one-liners, and omic routines. In 1921, she graduated from West High School of Denver and did two years of college at University of Colorado Boulder and University of Denver. But she didn't graduate from college. In 1924, she began her career as a journalist in the Denver Times, which folded into the Rocky Mountain News. I have a special admiration and love for that big white rabbit. And here we are at our next location. We just came from West High School in the Baker neighborhood where Miss Mary Coyle grew up. She left the news in 1931 to write plays, freelance and raise a family. She wrote for the news, writing on the society pages, soon becoming a feature writer from Sob Sister, Emotional Angle, becoming part of the news itself as a comic figure, Our Little Mary, or writing funny flapper era pieces as part of a series of Charlie and Mary stories. Charlie Wonder drew the cartoons and Mary wrote the text. In the 1920s, reporters worked for the most part in the front page tradition, putting in long hours. She wrote an autobiography 
novel called The Banshee. Of all the films I've made, Harvey is one of my favorites. And also as the publicity director for the Teamsters Union. During this time, she was working on her famous play, Harvey, taking her two years to finish after many revisions. On November 1st, 1944, the play opened on Broadway, and was a smash hit running for four and a half years. With 1,775 performances, Harvey became the 35th longest running play in Broadway history. Starring Frank Fay, James Stewart, Josephine Hull, Ruth McDivitt, Marion Lorne, Helen Hayes, wife of Herbert Hayes, and Swissie Kurtz. You can see it on the, on the performers, on the, uh, the, all of us. You can see that uh, all of us sort of accept the existence of this rabbit. James Stewart won Best Actors Oscar for the film version. In 1945, Miss Chase won the Pulitzer Prize in Drama for Harvey, the only Coloradoan to win in drama, and the fourth woman to win. Zora Gale won 1921, Susan Glassbell 1931, and Zoe Atkins 1935. Name? Perhaps they neglected to tell you at medical school that a rabbit has large pointed ears. Do you know what you've done? You've allowed a psychopathic case to walk. Drinking hard and always trying to outdo the competition for a top story. She ran all over Denver with photographer Harry Rose in a Model T Ford. As she recalled, we would travel all over Denver in the course of a day. We may, we may begin at the police court, go to a high profile trial at West Side Court, cover a party in the evening at Miss Crawford's Hills Mansion, then rush to cover a crime. 11 p.m. She ended her career of journalism writing for the Society pages, where she began, as was stated. She had to roam around with an overgrown white rabbit. Now you've done it. But failed to attract positive reviews and closed after three weeks. In 1938, she wrote She House. It was made into a Hollywood film called S Sorority House, starring Anne Shirley of Anne of Green Gables fame. In the 1940s, she had a series of government volunteer and union jobs, serving as the information director for National Youth Administration doing volunteer work for the Colorado Foundation for the Advancement of Spanish-Speaking Peoples. In 1928, Mary had married a hard news reporter working at the Denver Express since 1922, covering the robbery of the U.S. Mint and fighting the rise of the Ku Klux Klan. Here is where Mary lived with her husband and her three sons. And this is where the playwright Harvey was wrote. I believe that these apartments were put in later and the house that was here was torn down where she lived. But this is the spot. This is where she wrote Harvey. Very beautiful landmark homes here in Denver neighborhood.
Now we will cover uh, another location, our last location. Let's go, we have some more adventuring to do. Thanks for coming along with me. He became a, a, a very close friend of mine. We were driving and Whoops, Ugh. Callie, gotta watch out for that ice. It's a doozy. This building is a historical landmark called the Baker Federal Theater. It was built in the 1920s. Mary Coyle Chase's first play, Me Third, played here in 1936, but it only played for three weeks. From my research, this did give her the inspiration. She knew she had a play that she could write that would take her to Broadway. Well, later, in 1948, it was remodeled by the architect Charles D. Strong. It went on to showcase up-and-coming movies for the times, all the way up to 1986, such as Tron, Pretty in Pink, The Thing, and etc. It was a discount dollar theater on to become a music venue. And in 2009, renovations began for the Outreach Church, helping the homeless and reaching out to the community. I was allowed to go in and take a video of the theater itself. And upstairs is a balcony. It is quite exciting to see that this historical landmark is being used to help the community. Yeah, we came in here, it was pretty tore up. I've had letters, and they've, they've said, one of the reasons I like the picture so much is because I, I have a friend like that that I sort of turn to when I need advice and when I need encouragement. I don't know whether mine is a, a, a rabbit or not, but, a, but a, he's a friend. You know, this man whose best friend is a a big white rabbit who nobody can see. In order to be convincing, in order to, to uh, be successful as a play and a movie, the writing has to be something very special and Mary Chase certainly uh, made that take place. We come to Crown Hill Cemetery. The beautiful snowy day. We just got a storm. We're going to come up to Mary Coyle Chase and her husband Robert. In 1928, Mary married Robert L. Chase, a fellow reporter of the Rocky Mountain News, a seasoned hard news reporter working for the Denver Express since 1922. 
covering the robbery of the U.S. Mint and fighting against the rise of the Ku Klux Klan in Colorado and local politics. The Express eventually merged with the Rocky Mountain News and Bob went on to a 47-year career at the paper working towards associate editor. He became a founding member in 1935. In 1932, they had their first son, Michael, who became the director of public television in New York. Their second son, Colin, a professor of English literature at the University of Toronto. And third son, Jerry, a college academic counselor in New York City, and wrote the play, Cinderella War, Combat Boots. While working on the musical adaption, Say Hello to Harvey in 1981, Mary Coyle Chase suffered a heart attack suddenly in her home in Denver at the age of 75. And here we will come to the final resting place of Robert L. and Mary C. Chase. Robert, 1905 to 1990, and Mary, 1906 to 1981. I had a lot of fun telling her story. It's a story about this man that has this great big white rabbit. That, that's his friend. When I first found her story, I, I got a lot of inspiration from her because she was a pioneering newspaper reporter, journalist, playwright, author. She never gave up. From what I read, she seemed very strong and Persevering, I get a lot of motivation from that. And we found this really cool rock, and I left some flowers for for them. So I want to thank Mary and Robert Chase for letting me tell their story. I felt very positive about the whole experience and I like that in a story that I can tell and I think it's good to tell their story although it happened a long time ago we should never forget about these pioneering people that brought creativity and perseverance to the world and in this story brought journalism and writing, being a playwright and never giving up on your dream of the story that she was writing and really wanted to bring it to the world in all the ways possible. I'm working on something similar. So here we go. Thank you for joining me on my journalism adventure. There will be more to come. I have one over there. And I have one over there. And I have one on the other side. And then I have more way out yonder.
stay tuned for a tribute story. We're going to go just a little bit over that way. It's a warm-hearted tale that proves there's no power like the power of the imagination. So I, I, I just like to say to all of you people out there. I also would like to add a little tribute to the Harvey family that lay just behind Mary and Robert Chase. Edwin and Doris M. Harvey had a daughter named Doris Marvita Harvey Zellner, who also attended West High School. She was an editor of textbooks and an accomplished artist. I found this to be quite intriguing. They found one another to rest together. You'll be able to see them as many times as you want to, and I, I sure hope you enjoy it. <laughs>